Peter Drucker once said, until we can manage time, we can manage nothing else. And it's difficult to disagree. If you have two people of equal ability, one is productive and the other is not, who do you think will find it easier to succeed in life? And it's all the more important for teenagers. Why? Because the habit of time management or the habit of mismanaging time will stay with your teenager for the rest of their lives. It will dictate the quality of their life. It will dictate how much they struggle and it will dictate how far they can reach. Believe me, mismanaging time is not an attribute associated with successful people. In the previous video, by the way, if you haven't watched it, pause, go to the video link in the description and watch it in another tab, then come back to this video. So in the previous video, we talked about how your teenager can avoid the procrastination traps that most people fall into without realizing. This is only part of the time management equation. Avoiding procrastination is massively important. In fact, Victor Hugo, my second favorite French author, went to extreme lengths to ward off procrastination. He would tell his servant to take his clothes and leave Victor naked in his study. The servant was to return at a certain time with clothes. Herman Melville had his wife chain him to his desk. This shows the importance of overcoming procrastination. However, what about once your teenager does settle down to work? The element that comes into play is productivity. Phase one might be to begin, but phase two is utilizing time effectively. We are a society that seems to value busyness over productivity. If you think about it, the economic system favors paying people by the hour, regardless of how much work is done in that hour. Your boss can't suddenly lower your wage because you had an hour that was less productive than the previous one. If we value looking busy over actual results and output, it leads to poor time management. For example, your teenager might sit down to do revision and then spend the next hour color coordinating folders and dividers. Is that a productive use of revision time? For the rest of this video, we will look at ways your teenager can double their productivity. The first thing your teenager can do is eat the frog. I'm sure now I've got your attention. I'm not dispensing French culinary advice. What I'm referring to has nothing to do with food, thankfully. What I am talking about is the most difficult task your teenager has to do. On any given day, there will be a number of things your teenager has to get through. The one that your teenager least wants to do is the frog. The undesirable slimy thing on their to-do list that they will just try to put off indefinitely if they can. Eating the frog means doing that task first. Getting it out of the way is the best way to avoid not doing it. Often, the frog is a cause of procrastination because it seems so tough and intimidating. It's a feeling in the pit of the stomach, knowing that it needs to be done, but you don't want to do it. Like the feeling you might get if you swallowed a frog funnily enough. This feeling will hang over your teenager, making them feel worse and worse and worse. But this can be avoided. A task will never be as bad as a teenager imagines in their head. Math's homework feels like wrestling a lion. Context isn't always easy for teens. I know because chemistry homework regularly had me praying that our teacher was ill so she wouldn't be there to collect the work. Only years later did it occur to me that someone's health was probably more important than my chemistry homework. But I only overcame my aversion to this homework by doing it first. It was a crazy transformation. My teacher thought I'd started working a hundred times harder or something, but all I did was eat the frog. Once your teenager does that, the rest of the day will be like eating a piece of cake, which probably tastes a lot better than frog. The benefit is huge. Think about how good it feels to have a weight lifted off your shoulders. Remember how energetic and optimistic you suddenly felt? Well, your teenager can recreate this feeling every single day by eating that frog. 
If you really want your teenager to do productivity right, then Pareto's law is a must because it will save so much time and energy if done right. Pareto was in his garden one day and he realised something quite amazing. Well, amazing might be overstating it just a little bit. He found that 80% of his peas were being produced by 20% of his pea pods. He realised that distribution wasn't necessarily equal and he used this to coin the Pareto principle which was initially used to mean that 80% of wealth in Italy was owned by 20% of the people. Now it's an interesting story, I think, but what does it have to do with your teenager's productivity? Not everything we do will give us equal results. It might not be exactly 80-20, but you'll find that some things that you do will end up accounting for a lot more of your results. For example, when learning a new topic in chemistry, my favourite topic, your teen might spend 80% of their time reading from the textbook. 10% of their time watching a YouTube video on the topic and 10% of the time making flashcards. It could end up being the case that they get most results from watching the YouTube video and making flashcards on the topic than the time spent on reading the textbook. That means to be more productive you need to encourage your teenager to identify what resources get them the most results and focus their attention there. Leading on from that is Parkinson's law, which states that work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. What does this mean? We tend to look at a task and set ourselves an exaggerated time frame to do it in. What tends to happen is that the task will end up taking as much time as we set for it. So if we set three days for a task, we'll end up getting it done around that time. If we set an hour for a task, we'll end up getting it done in around that time frame. Meaning, your teen is actually making tasks bigger for themselves by setting more time for them. Let's work with an example that I actually tested when I was a tutor. Compare these two scenarios. I give a student one hour to do a task and make them do it in front of me. Scenario two. I set the same task, but give the student a week to do it. Nine times out of 10, the quality was better when the work was done in front of me. When I set a presentation task, one for the lesson and one for homework, what do you think the results were? The student actually gets more done in the lesson, even though it's only an hour, and less done when they have a week to complete the task. This is really important because we tend to be very time orientated in our productivity. We attach more importance to the time we spent doing something rather than focusing on the result that we want. Your teenager needs to be results orientated. Just because they're busy does not mean they're being productive. I feel like I need to repeat this because it's so important. Just because they're busy does not mean they're being productive. Encourage your teenager to focus on getting results, not on spending time on tasks. They'll realise how quickly they can get things done and how much they're actually holding themselves back. If you want to do anything, get your to-do list right. How many times have you created a to-do list and not even come close to completing it? That's because you've been doing it wrong and so has your teenager. To make a to-do list work, it helps to incorporate the following. Make the to-do list the night before. It allows your teenager's brain the time and space to mentally prepare for what needs to be done. The actual to-do list itself needs to be jigged a little bit. It can't just be a long list of unorganised one-liners. Every task needs to be organised according to importance and urgency. Even with an organised to-do system, your teenager must not forget to eat the frog first. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. And most importantly, don't forget to join the revolution in parenting. Bye for now.